thank you for joining. Um, I hope that more people will join for sure. More people will join in the coming minutes so I can start doing the introductions and then we will have more people to list in the, the core of our of our call today. Um, so this is the um, uh, 12th community call for all the open air content providers, managers, uh, targeting different kind of people. I know that all community calls, we have new people, <laughs> newcomers, which is great. So we usually we, we like to talk about um, the novelties, the recent developments uh, related with um, the open air infrastructure services, but those services, uh, features, functionalities, targeting repository managers, um, um, Chris system managers, um, editors, those that are contributing with content uh, for, for, for open air. Uh, today we we have a dedicated session more on the side of 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 the broker service and uh, the power of the broker let's say i just put this title but we will because we will uh, listening the results uh, from a, a project from our uh, from the open air innovation um tender that we run uh, and we will have a presentation from the company for science uh, that did uh, um, a great project my perspective, um, bringing innovation to the space and uh, reusing the the content uh, from the, the open air graph and specifically from the broker service, and then uh, also uh, one of my colleagues in open air, Claudio Azzori from CNRST, will also detail some some important recent information related with the broker um, APIs. Um, so. Um, this will be the the agenda. I will come back to this agenda. So, and uh, for this um, for this for the main topic that we have uh, apart from Cloud sorry presentation on the broken service and overview about its API, uh, Andrea Bolini from representing Gear for Science will uh, detail uh, the results of this project, which I think will be, I might, from my perspective, a great benefit for all repositories community and also I think a little bit for also increase community uh, focus on this space I know for this space community but I think it's a great example also to serve um, uh, as a guidance also for other other software platforms and um, uh, Jordan our colleague a repository manager from the University of Trieste will also join this presentation we also join Andre Bolini to to present a use case specifically for the University of Trieste that they have already, in fact, implemented or kind of, uh, you would do a kind of demo. Okay, this is our agenda for today. And as you know, you can ask questions, you can also put other additional problems at the end uh, that we can discuss. Just my highlights for today in two minutes. Um, usually I have always this slide to present some, to detail some some developments, recent developments, provide some also some information about ongoing uh, ongoing um, developments. This this one about the multi-user access, something that you are asking a long time ago, and uh, we are almost there. Uh, this is related with also the um, our um, authentication service. Um, in fact, you can already see something in uh, in our beta service um, which are we playing with in order to to prove that we are almost there <laughs> and you can you can test if you if you if you visit beta.provide.openair.eu um, you will see already a bit of what we want to implement related with this multi-user access this is just something that for those of you that don't know is just a, a way that currently we only have one um login attached to manage each uh, content provider in open air and this is just a facility in order for the uh, one admin those that, that have access to the login can also provide us access to other users to to play uh, with the dashboard of that specific data source the other thing is what was a bug that um, uh, it's uh, it's um, fixed uh, it's already in beta and in production in the coming days if not this week, uh, 
for sure Monday or Tuesday next week. So there was some um, disalignment between uh, some graphs, between the Explore, between um, some content providers were had the graphs updated, others no. This was related with the a migration from um, uh, uh, our machines and clusters um, and now almost all graphs from users accounts are, are updated so please stay tuned and in the, in the for sure in the coming week we will have it in provide in the providing production okay uh, broker apis some recent uh, developments uh, you can also check information in beta but claudio will present in real detail that in the presentation and in terms of support information, there are some um, some new fact sheets that you can use to learn a little bit more or to share with others in your in your institutions or in your countries um, that is are targeting content provider managers. About the multi-user access, this is the way that we are going to have it. Uh, we already presented before, but our idea is that here under update in in provide, you will have um, a new tab. To manage um, the um, to update uh, administrators of your of your data source, so this is something quite interesting. You can invite others to join. It's important to say that you need to invite people that have already a login, okay, in, in OpenAir. It's not an invitation for new users. They need to be users in OpenAir, and then you invite them to play with the the information with from from your data source, which is. Uh, Good, and we are almost there. Also, um, important to highlight this graph updated that I have already talked about. They are already also in beta. You can you can check, and we will put it in production uh, as soon as possible. Really, in the coming days. This is the the promise from our great technical team, and the fact sheets. So you can find all this. Uh, there are lots of new fact sheets also for other services um, and for other topics from Open Air, also related with. Um, Open science policies, requirements, uh, research data management. Uh, we did a lot of lot of updates of these new fact sheets with the new layout, etc. So just visit openair.eu slash fact sheets. But there are two targeting repository managers. Okay, these all those the new information that I want to to give. If you have any questions, just put it here in the chat. I can I can reply. Um and or at the end I also can reply. Feel free also to 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 ask your questions using the the audio. Now it's time to to um, these presentations that we are uh, all <laughs> waiting for the results of this um, great project. Andrea Bolini from For Science will detail this. Uh, you both can present yourself. I don't want to spend time presenting you. You both, you can present yourself and um, detail this um, this um, this project and the result of this project, the the target and the um, uh, the scope. Um, so this is something that it's quite a benefit for um, this space, uh, Chris, um, uh, and this space repositories uh, in um, version seven. But uh, the type of implementation should also guide. The implementations in other in other repository platforms but andrea bolini please i will stop my thanks pedro thanks for this nice uh, introduction and the grand news that i see uh, i seen from the open air team so uh, i'm andrea bolini i'm the technical director of for science we are a um, service provider for uh, for the space very uh, strong positioned in uh, the space community and in the one source community in general uh, i'm a long-term space committer uh, together with other uh, colleagues in for science uh, i'm very happy to to have this chance to present to to you, um, to all of you, uh, the result of this project that was uh, uh, was part of the Open Air Innovation Program. Uh, the project is named uh, Open Air ELD as acronym that means rich local data with Open Air uh, graph, 
and uh, is targeted mainly to, to the space platform. But as Pedro say, we have a lot of uh, uh, result and uh, um, idea that can be easily reused in other uh, platform. So the, the project goal was uh, was to we have proposed and we have implemented two two services for the space and the space crease. So it's important to know that this project work both in the case of a basic display space then in the case of the space crease flavor that uh, I hope many of you uh, know is the extension to, uh, that uh, for science bring to the space community. Uh, the two services are named uh, data correction, and uh, this service is based on uh, the notification broker service of OpenAir and aim to improve existing data in the repository. So essentially using the intelligence from uh, the notification broker, uh, we will uh, make actionable uh, the suggestion of the notification broker inside the repository. The other service is named publication claim and allow the repository manager and the researcher to identify new content that is already available in the uh, open air uh, ecosystem information space. So uh, going uh, just to, to, to spoiler the, the result, uh, the two product features have been both implemented. Uh, the project, uh, I'm happy to say that it was successful. Uh, we have a, a website where all the documentation about the project is uh, uh, is available. You can check on uh, uh, is a GitHub uh, website, and you will find all the detail, both in terms of the user interface and uh, in terms of the implementation. Uh, the source code is on GitHub, and uh, it's available for both playing this space, uh, coming in this space seven version, then uh, included the out of box in this space, Chris. Uh, it's include all the aspect of the space uh, source code. So there is a part for the, the backend for the API, uh, um, one for the Angular user interface, and there are information to the documentation of the rest contract. Uh, this project target for version seven, so the coming new version of the space and the space crease, and uh, adopt the, the paradigm of the, uh, the space seven uh, platform. So there is automatic test for both feature, and these are in place for backend and front end. So it's fully compliant with the best practice of the space co uh, community. Uh, during the uh, this, this project, we have run a pilot installation uh, to, to test these services on real data with, uh, um, with a, a, a real uh, institution. And uh, Jordan is here uh, with me today and will tell you uh, the result of this pilot. And it's also important to know that we have an acceptance test for so a list of functional tests that the user can perform on the platform to verify that the product uh, work, uh, work well. The uh, product architecture is, uh, is based on uh, um, the OpenAir uh, REST API and the OpenAir broker. So the OpenAI REST uh, API are used to, to query the, uh, the OpenAI graph to search for new publications that are related to research at your institution, but not yet known to your repository. So essentially, you search for all publication of your researcher in OpenAI. And the, the results are stored in a temporary uh, solar core for better management uh, in, uh, in this space. Uh, on top of this solar database, we build uh, REST API so that uh, uh, the Angular user interface can access this data, but also uh, other script or any other client can access this REST API of your uh, space to build additional service on top of uh, what we build on using the OpenAI REST API. The same uh, route is uh, more or less followed also for the OpenAI uh, open broker. 
uh, when the project started one year ago and uh, also now there is no yet a public API for the notification broker, but what we have uh, agreed with the OpenAge team, uh, we have worked together Sign this uh, public API, so we we bring use case uh, idea, and uh, 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 we have agreed about a format to exchange the information. So essentially, what is done now is then uh, the OpenAI team send to the repository manager uh, periodically a JSON file with all the detail about uh, that the notification broker has discovered. This JSON file is loaded in a solar core. And uh, using this data, uh, uh, this space provides all the user interface that are required to uh, work on this data in, uh, in the repository. So, try to give a bit more detail about the two service. Uh, the data correction is related to the uh, scenario where a manager of a repository that is already indexed in OpenAir. So, uh, is the uh, that is attending this this web call essentially? So you are a content provider. Uh, you have access to the content uh, dashboard, and you know about uh, a notification broker. Uh, what we try to do is to fill the last mile of the notification broker uh, dashboard. Essentially, in the dashboard of OpenAI, you will. Uh, uh, get a lot of detail about uh, missing information in your local record or wrong information that can be co corrected and uh, things like that. Uh, but if you want to apply this suggestion to your repository, right now you need to log in, in your repository, edit the item manually and uh, copy and paste information from the user interface of OpenAir to your repository. What the service provides is a dashboard inside your repository. So as a repository manager, you log in in this space, you will get uh, all the detail of the notification broker inside your this space. And you can immediately say, uh, this suggestion is good. I want to add this additional persistent identifier to my item. I want to add this missing abstract. I want to link this item to uh, my project. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, uh, there is also a callback flow of this information. So we uh, take care to notify OpenAir of what decision you take around the suggestion that they, uh, they have done. This is really important because allowing future to improve the capacity of uh, guessing of OpenAir because they can uh, better understand when uh, uh, some suggestion was phase positive or was rejected for other reason and can improve the intelligence of the notification broker. The second service is the publication claim and it's based on uh, a com very common scenario. So a new researcher joined your institution, but uh, probably this researcher, uh, many times the researcher move from one institution to another so there is a high probability that uh, uh, these researchers have already content deposited in other repository that are, have contributed this content to open air. So uh, what we propose here is a way to for the new repository to log in, in your system. Uh, this space will query uh, automatically query open air using the detail of uh, your researcher. So basically the, the name and uh, uh, scanning all the results from open air, it could decide which publication seem to be related to this researcher and suggest to the, researcher, to the researcher to immediately import this publication into the repository, saving a lot of uh, time, uh, researcher time to prevent manual uh, input. Jordan, I would like to you to talk about uh, the pilot. Yes, uh, I tell everybody. Um, so I am Jordan Fischer, the repository manager of the University of Toronto, and it was a great pleasure for me to participate to this pilot with the real data of our repository. And uh, let me say, since the real power of the, the, the sound, the sound is not great, uh, Jordan. I don't know why. Could you right. just 
Yes, this is microphone. Did you hear uh, better? No, 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 yes, no, yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's restart. So I am the repository manager of the University of Trieste, and uh, it was a great pleasure for me to participate to this pilot uh, with the real data of our repository. And let me say to see the real power of broker service and um, researcher graph. Uh, let me start with uh, this uh, auto citation. <laughs> Because it was a great improvement for the broker service. Uh, I um, finally uh, see the suggested data of the um, broker service in the place where I need this data, so directly in my repository. Uh, the great integration helps uh, us as a repository manager to quickly decide and then reach uh, the data that we have in our repository. Uh, directly in the environment uh, that we are used to work and manage. Uh, I see it as an all-in-one solution. Previously, I have to go to the OpenAir uh, site, check the data, uh, copy and paste uh, them in my repository. The next slide is... Uh, Andrea, the next slide, I can... Okay, yes. Uh, in the, about the publication claim service, uh, let me say that this was the real practical usage of this uh, service that OpenAir give us. Uh, the real thing that I think that is great uh, is that uh, this is also uh, integrated in our repository, but uh, let me say this uh, is also a real time saver for the researcher because when they log into the repository the publication claim service will suggest them all the new publications found in the researcher graph that are not present in our repository and then they could automatically import them going next So what we have done in this pilot project, uh, we tested all the various functionalities that For Science give us with some tests, but we also improved this uh, adding some other tests that I found that could be uh, a good uh, test pilot uh, test pilots. Um, using these uh, services in the repository, I also suggest some new improvements and also new features because uh, you understand that when you start using as a repository manager these uh, uh, functionalities, you find that some new ideas uh, or improvements uh, could be done. And uh, so we help also uh, for science to fix some bugs uh, that I find and uh, they also work on the performance improvements to, to deal with larger repositories because let me say we have uh, yes a repository but uh, it's not so huge like others our repository is 20,000 items let's go further to see what we have done so uh, the first two suggestions that we, uh, at the end of the pilot uh, that we uh, have found, are uh, these two. So that for the data correction service, uh, it will be fine that the JSON uh, should be pushed directly into the repository or downloaded from the OpenAir dashboard. Uh, because now during the test, uh, uh, Andrea had to talk with the development team of an open air. They give him uh, the JSON, and I have to uh, upload it in the uh, repository. And uh, it will be fine also that uh, this JSON should contain all the information that are in the open air uh, dashboard. About publication claim, uh, let me say that I am the <laughs> right person. Uh, that uh, have done this test because uh, with my last name that is so particular, I also find that uh, the REST API uh, doesn't work properly with all Unicode characters. So I didn't find my publications. 
and uh, another uh, improvement could be um, a rest and point uh, to use and explore the um, portal with all the fuse search that is available uh, on the web portal that we are used to um, uh, query uh, avoiding uh, the need the need to guess or ask the user so uh, we as a repository manager to use the index of the authors the uh, or of the title but this you can see the in the demo slides that we are going to see uh, now let's go with the slides about talking about the demo yeah so uh, we can also make a live demo uh, but i'm not sure what would be faster probably to slide because we have a lot of content uh, so one important thing is then uh, all these process uh, uh, all these service requires some process to be run on the uh, onto the space server uh, a nice feature of uh, display 7 is the possibility to uh, run some of these processes directly from the user interface and uh, we have may uh, we will take care to uh, include this new script in into one that can be run from the user interface so essentially in this screen you see that there is a new import notification broker events that can be run from the uh, user interface. You can upload uh, uh, the JSON file that you received from the OpenAI team and it will be processed. Of course, you can do that also from the common online. Uh, let me say that this was one of the great uh, improvements because when I start, uh, I, I found in the documentation that they had to go to the console and I'd ask Andrea, uh, okay, and, but I have no access to the console and they quickly uh, improve this with uh, these scripts that are uh, available at the uh, web interface for the manager. And Andre, yeah. if it's possible, you can also include already some information about the versions as someone already asked in the chat. Jordan already answered, but just to clarify before this demo, the version. Yes, uh, I, I will say again because uh, yeah. it is important. So it's for version. Le, the source code is included out of box with the space Chris 7. If you download the space Chris 7 from GitHub, uh, it's not yet uh, a final release. Uh, I, I think that many of you know that the space and the space Chris 7 is still under development. Uh, essentially, it's, uh, we hope to present them uh, at the open repository. Uh, but you can download uh, the source code from uh, from GitHub, and for the Space Chris Seven, this, uh, this so solution are already included in uh, the source code. You just need to download uh, the Space Chris, and you will get this feature uh, available acti active in your repository. For the Space, uh, this uh, this feature are uh, present as a pull request to the community, so it's not yet merged with the official uh, main branch. And due to the uh, schedule of the Space 7, uh, I'm afraid to say that probably this will be not part of uh, 7.0. Uh, at least this is uh, uh, what the community suggests has to really focus for 7.0 on uh, the existing feature and don't try to add too much complexity in uh, this release. But I hope that they will be merged uh, as soon as possible, maybe in 7.1. In any case, when 7.0 will be out, when you start to use the space uh, 7, you can apply the patch uh, manually to your repository and immediately start to use this feature. Uh, this other screen show how the uh, different topic of the notification broker are presented in the administrative user interface of the space. So you see that uh, uh, there are uh, more persistent identifier or some missing persistent identifier, more abstract, missing project, more project that was found, and the number of events that was uh, received. So more than 5,000 uh, persistent identifier. Uh, uh, persi identifier, 53 abstract, and so on. Unfortunately, in this data, we also need to note that there are some uh, 
uh, uh, rumors, some noise from uh, the notification broker related to uh, self persistent identifier. Uh, you can click on the number to to get the details. So, for instance, uh, uh, this is the detail we go to see more uh, person identifier. Uh, you see here that uh, uh, there are some uh, DOI suggested, but you can also get uh, uh, PubMed ID or uh, other uh, identifier for your publication. Uh, one uh, suggestion that we received during the pilot uh, from Jordan was to make this person identifier actionable. So all the links that you found in this interface allow, uh, will open uh, the, the detail in a separate tab so that the repository manager can uh, immediately check more detail about this DOI to verify if it is a proper suggestion or not. And once that you verify that, you can just decide to accept the suggestion or ignore the suggestion, reject the suggestion. Essentially, uh, the, if you accept the suggestion, what will happen is then uh, the additional person identifier will be added to your local metadata. To which metadata, to exactly which metadata and in which format can be configured but uh, uh, we provide a default configuration that makes sense uh, for, most, uh, for most installation. The difference between ignore and reject uh, essentially is because uh, uh, reject means that the suggestion is, is wrong. Uh, as the, your decision go back to, uh, to open air, it's important that uh, you can in your suggestion in some case, because maybe it's outdated because you have already included this DOI manually in your repository, or uh, because you prefer to don't uh, store the, the PubMed ID in your repository. So you just decide to ignore to clean up your dashboard, but you want you don't want to notify OpenAir that this is a wrong information. And if I could uh, add, this is what I say uh, with one click uh, in the repository, I get uh, quickly the data because with one click, uh, I accept it and the data are in my record of my repository without uh, copy and paste or other uh, work. Thank you. Yeah, and the screen and the option that you have depend on the topic. So in, the, uh, in this case, when you uh, work on, on a project, uh, this is the more uh, complex uh, scenario that uh, we manage. Essentially, OpenAid uh, found that for a local publication, suggests to link this publication with an OpenAid project. Uh, these are all the details that come from OpenAid, so the project title, the code, the funder, funding program, uh, you can click on the project title and this will open the, uh, the detail on the core this database. Uh, but you can search your local disk space installation for, uh, for this project because maybe you already have in disk space 7 this project as a local record. And if this is the case, you want to be sure that uh, uh, you can link uh, your publication to your existing project without duplicating this data. But if this is not the case, you can also just say import the project and accept suggestion. So essentially, this single button will do two things. We'll create a new item that is uh, with the detail of the project that will represent the project and will link your publication with this project. Uh, this is the screen about how you can search for uh, the, the project. Uh, once that the project has been assigned, you see that there is a bound to local record that you have to handle here, that you can click and see the detail of your uh, of the local project. You can uh, eventually uh, remove the, the link if this was done wrongly or uh, if you change your mind. And once that you um, import the project, the decision is saved, so the dashboard uh, this item will be removed from the dashboard and all the link will be established. Uh, the same end-to-end uh, -end process apply also for the other service. 
you uh, need to run a process on a daily or weekly basis to search for new publication for your researcher. Uh, you can run over all of the research in your repository or you can force the script to process a specific researcher. And you can do that from the command line, but also from uh, uh, the user interface. Once that you have run this project, uh, this process, you will get uh, um, a list of, uh, of researcher uh, for which the system has found a uh, suggestion. And as a repository manager, you can uh, man uh, manage the suggestion for all these researchers. So you can decide eventually to centralize this service and have your librarian to uh, import new publication for your research on behalf of your research. But the same, uh, the same interface uh, is also available to the single researcher. Of course, the single researcher can only manage uh, its own list of suggestions. So in this case, I have the suggestion for uh, my colleague, Claudio Cortese, and uh, you will get a sorted list by score where uh, the score is uh, uh, give you uh, uh, an idea about uh, uh, how many evidence are present that uh, uh, allow you to uh, allow the system to guess that this publication is really authored by, uh, by Claudio in this case. Uh, mm, out of box, by default, we have uh, uh, just two, mm, two scorers in, uh, in the system. One is based on the name, so one of the files that we uh, immediately note when we start to work with the REST API of OpenAir is that uh, uh, right now uh, it's very difficult to make a great query on OpenAir, so you get uh, uh, a lot of noise because, uh, for instance, if you search for uh, uh, for my name, Andrea Bollini, uh, you could find also um, um, publication authored by Giuseppe Bollini and Andrea Rossi. So if you mix my first name with the first name of another uh, author and uh, and the surname. So the first score that we have implemented is one that look really to the single string, auto string and clean up everything that is, uh, is wrong due to this, uh, uh, this high level of noise. Uh, the second score that we have included uh, also as an example, as inspiration to build uh, additional uh, intelligence is one based on the, uh, on the date that are available in the, in the researcher profile. So you can add uh, the beer day or you can add the education, the graduation date to, um, to your researcher. If you do that, essentially the system will uh, consider more uh, reasonable some public that fit uh, uh, in a range of year that can be configured but is close to your graduation and uh, the start of your career. Uh, it's nice to say that uh, uh, just with this two scorer, uh, we move from uh, uh, more than 300 suggestions for, uh, for Claudio to, um, to 100. And if we also implement the date, this will go to around 50 uh, suggestions that is very, very close to which was the actual uh, suggestion for Claudio. Uh, sorry, you can also select multiple suggestion plans and uh, just import all, uh, all together. Also in this case, uh, we record the fact that you say that is uh, uh, if a, a wrong suggestion and uh, this additional data can be used maybe in future to implement a new, uh, new scorer that we learn from what the users say. So here you say uh, I see a detail of the evidence for uh, for this uh, for this publication. So the name Claudio Cortese, exactly the full name was found in, at position four of the list, and uh, uh, the date scorer cannot say anything because in the uh, Claudio profile there is uh, no uh, a beer date when we make uh, this screenshot. 
uh, when the researcher log in into the system, uh, they will immediately get a notification about the new suggest the new publication that was found. So if you are an administrator, you go over the administrative menu and we scroll for the researcher. But if you are a normal researcher, you will be immediately notified just upon login of your uh, suggestion. And if you close the, uh, the, the, the alert, the, the pop-up, uh, you will get this information uh, fixed in uh, your MyD space. So you can always uh, go back and see if you have suggestion and find uh, quickly the, the link to this suggestion. Uh, as an additional value that uh, we built uh, working on this project uh, was that uh, to, to implement uh, uh, the publication claim service, we have decided to reuse internally uh, a concept that was already in Dispace 7, that was the concept of import from external provider. So essentially what we have done is uh, more general system is not uh, tailored only to open air, but can be applied also to other provider. And uh, to apply this system to another provider, what you need to do is to write a connector that uh, uh, allow the space to search to query this provider. And in the case of open air, this results in two different connectors. One that allow us to query open air by author so that I can search for Bollini or for Pisca. Uh, and another one that uh, is to search open air by title of, of, of the publication. Uh, unfortunately, these two connectors need to be separated uh, because uh, this was one of the suggestions for the open air team for the REST API. Uh, there is not yet a, an API that allows us to make a fuzzy search over uh, open air, but we need to go over a specific index. So we can only search for author or search for title. Uh, if you use this connector directly, you will make uh, a search, you will get the list of results, you can check the detail and uh, uh, import your uh, uh, record in, uh, uh, in the system. Uh, this also uh, allow us to, to give a lot of flexibility in uh, the configuration because, of course, you can uh, map all the metadata of OpenAir to the specific metadata of your, uh, of your repository. So, to summarize, the, the functionality are available out of box with the space Chris 7. You only need to ask OpenA to inform the OpenA team that you want to receive the JSON file. And you will get this JSON file periodically to load into the system. We have opened a pull request for, uh, for the space, for the uh, plain the space. Uh, there are pull requests for the REST contract, the REST API, and the Angular user interface. Uh, please, if you like this work, if you want to see this work adopted by the space community, uh, make an effort to go over this pull request. If you have a chance, make a try, uh, provide feedback. Uh, any feedback is useful. So you can help with documentation, you can help with tests, you can just help uh, letting us know how much important is this feature for you uh, to give the right priority compared to all the tasks that we need to implement for this space. Uh, keep in mind that there is a dedicated website for the documentation where you will find all the detail, including the, uh, the very extensive configuration that can be done for this feature. So, and a lot of information also about how to extend, how to improve further this, uh, this feature. Yeah. Great, Andrea and Jordan, many thanks. So I don't know if there are any questions for sure. Just uh, put the questions in the chat, but but please feel free to, to also to, to do it online. So on, with your audio and just, just ask the questions directly or comment this work. So I think this is really great. We are quite, we are really happy with the, the results of this, of this, um, of this project. Uh, 
and uh, and uh, it's um, the documentation so the the, the project is really uh, well documented so the documentation is really useful <laughs> and helpful um so please uh, feel free to um, to ask questions now we will have a short presentation also from claudio you can think a bit and ask questions also after the presentation from claudio but uh, so Yes, uh, Andrea, you are highlighting some things. You are doing. You are running a demo. <laughs> or... Yeah, yeah. Just to keep keep sharing and uh, show that uh, everything exists is. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 I, I, these are not mockups. This is really. <laughs> no, no, it's really working. <laughs> I, I, I can also to work on this uh, this morning uh, because I was reaching some data and uh, it's working. It's still working. <laughs> this is great. No, uh, let me say it's also great because uh, uh, Open Air also give me the um, mails uh, of new features, and I found them uh, here. So the, the 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 link with the broker service is uh, functioning. It's not only a demo. We have a, yes, a, a question uh, in the mm -hmm. in the meeting notes from Magdalena. Asking if the publication claim is metadata only. Right now, yes, yeah. uh, but uh, it can be extended. And uh, if you, if we found a way to retrieve the PDF file from uh, maybe from a paywall or directly from uh, from OpenAir, it's still possible to to import that. Thank you, thank you for your question. If, if there are any other questions, so we will, after the cloudy presentation, um, Andrea and Jordan can can reply. Uh, but but be aware of these developments. This is quite important, of course, that we see. Okay, this is useful for those that are these space uh, users and that that have these space installations that this from these versions or are, are are expecting to have this here um, an updated of your this space version. But the the type of implementation, I think, is an example for other platforms. And uh, and Claudio uh, will now present some details of the APIs are relevant uh, for some of you that are in this call. Uh, maybe it's uh, you think that for some of others, uh, this is the information for the IT, the IT department of your institution. So you can point them to this presentation and to this uh, recording. So Claudio will give uh, now some details. So Claudio, thank you for joining also us. No, thank you, Pedro. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, so first of all, it's a, a real pleasure uh, as a member of the Open Air team to, to see uh, this kind of impact for, for one of the services that just a couple of years ago was just an idea on pen and paper becoming a reality and actually having such this kind of impact is really really good to to know so thank you everybody for this effort and providing all the feedback that uh, actually drove the implementation and uh, keep refining uh, the concept implemented in this service so i'm going to uh, provide uh, a complementary uh, view about uh, what andrea and jordan presented on uh, an alternative way to consume uh, the added value information that uh, enriches uh, the local collections of metadata. So, uh, as always, the story starts from the original bibliographic records, uh, open air ingest from repositories. They are different types, and uh, in this sketch, I just wanted to, to highlight which are uh, the most important important phases uh, with regard to the kind of actions that the broker service performs. In this sense, as you can see here in the supply chain, the first uh, phase consists of uh, harmonizing structurally and semantically the bibliographic records. Although we rely on standards, uh, working with the real data, uh, we realize that uh, 
the records still need to be harmonized as standards get interpreted and in order to have a common understanding about the semantic uh, inside of the records we have to uh, do more in terms of uh, harmonizations and when you have more than 1000 uh, repositories on board the interpretations can be quite differentiated let's say second important step is uh, identification of duplicates as the same record can be found on different repositories where the definition of what is the same is tailored to uh, the opener needs let's say we are not providing an absolute definition of what two publications are the same and uh, to this regard uh, by same publication we intend those that correspond to equivalent objects so preprints postprints published versions are considered equivalent mostly for the purpose of uh, statistical analysis and monitoring however the broker posed uh, another uh, use case for which uh, we implemented the configuration of our of the open air the application system which i'm going to show in a moment the last important part that is worth highlighting in this supply chain is uh, the tdm activity uh, from which uh, open air extracts extra poor properties that are used to uh, enrich uh, the collection of metadata records properties and links to other uh, objects in open air research graph like uh, as andrea shown before links to research pro uh, research projects so the open air uh, broker service is based on a set of algorithms that analyzes uh, the open air research graph more specifically the target of the analysis is uh, made by the group of uh, duplicated records where uh, the algorithm is able to calculate uh, and derive the mutual enrichments that one record can provide to the other and since open air keep tracks of the provenance knows uh, which repository provided each individual metadata records we are built therefore we, we are able therefore to build um, the corresponding enrichment events for the broker service so when a repository manager logins on uh, the provide dashboard it's able to uh, explore the set of enrichments that uh, the, the broker service can build this uh, kind of view already gives a hint about the numbers of enrichments that can be uh, synthesized from the graph however until uh, repository manager sub actually subscribes to a given topic something like those that are indicated here in the slide like uh, missing or kids for authors or missing project references the broker, the broker service will not generate the full set of uh, enrichments for them in order to unlock these repository managers have to uh, actually subscribe to uh, a specific topic this will trigger basically uh, the full calculation of all the possible enrichments relative for that repository for that topic and will make uh, this notification uh, records available also through the new uh, broker public API this API uh, at the moment is available under we uh, will be available under API uh, open slash broker we are still finalizing uh, on the public endpoint end um, the introduction of an, auto, of an authentication mechanism to, hand, to better handle the rate limits for uh, the programmatic access. But uh, the, the truth is that the API is already available. So if you go here, you can already access this technical specification for uh, the documentation. And the API is composed by uh, two main uh, flavors, let's say. One 
is relative to what uh, Andrea mentioned during his presentation that allows users to download uh, files that uh, can be requested. At the moment, we are not generating them automatically, but we can take care of managing these requests and provide the files on demand. The other flavor is instead basically based on the concept of a sub subscriber and subscription ID. So, as I just mentioned, the first kind of usage is based on the provisioning of a request through the help desk, where the repository manager should indicate the open door identifier of the repository they are interested in. The opener team will then provide a new line delimited JSON record that will be made available for them to download. Note that this file will contain all the possible uh, kind of enrichments relative to any topic for which the users have performed a subscription. Instead, the, the other flavor by subscription indicated here is already documented under beta develop opener EU. And this list of, of, of comments uh, indicates how uh, a client can be implemented to acquire the information from this API. Essentially, the first request will be based on the subscriber email to discover which are the subscription IDs that will be in turn used to uh, gather the different uh, notification records. Then, since we are in this case, the response will be made of several several objects, uh, namely, they can be possibly hundreds of thousands in some cases. The request, the request uh, have to, to go through a list of responses, uh, more or less like in the OAI PMH implementation, where the resumption token allows a client to iterate through uh, the different uh, pages. The same concept applies in this uh, implementation. You should provide a scroll identifier to access the subsequent pages. However, complementarily to uh, the DSpace specific implementation, the OpenAir team is going to provide a dedicated API client that is going to be made available under the OpenAir uh, GitHub account, let's say. We are still working on that. Uh, but any feedback on the implementation for this client or suggestion is, is more than, than welcome. In the end, it's going to be a tool made for simplify the integration of uh, the added value built by OpenAir and made available through the, the broker service. So uh, we are eager to, to get feedback on this front. And that's it. For me. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Claudio, for providing all this um, irrelevant information. So, for you to be aware, uh, those things that are already available, those things that we are working and will be available as soon as possible. This is important. This is why also we have these community calls in order to provide some so uh, information really uh, new <laughs> for you. Um, not sure if you have uh, questions for Claudio and for uh, Andre and for Jordan. I think it's important if you can ask. So we are coming to the end. So I will just give some more seconds for the, for, for questions. Presentation and um, and um, uh, presentations and the recordings will be made uh, will be made available. So uh, you will for sure be aware of that. But uh, what I think it's important for you to know is about these new facilities uh, from Open Air and the um, the results from a project that is something real that to at least uh, this place uh, users can 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 use and can test um, uh, and 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 feel free to contact us i understand that for sure we will have one more community call dedicated to this um, to the to those developments because for sure uh, new and these space users will start using this in the future and maybe we can allocate more time in a call in the future to this we are only in march for sure i, I suppose in the second semester we will have novelties around this space um, but if anyone else can want to to share uh, feel free 
Andre, do we, we have any other question in the in the document? If if we, if you so Andre already shared the link here for the document that where we keep um, questions. If you put questions there after after the um, the the meeting, uh, we will reply. Uh, if we don't know, we ask Andre Andrea and, and Jordan to reply or Claudio. Okay, be aware of that. So no. Uh, we have the notes, we have the presentations available in the website. Uh, so many thanks uh, for your presence. One invitation, one last invitation for you to join also for um, for Andrea, Moin and for and for Jordan and for all of you to join this uh, this public event that we will uh, we will do next uh, in the coming week, uh, the Open Air Nexus project. It's a new project. It's a, it's, a, it's not a a similar project like open air advance or open air in the past it's a really small project that is targeted to the um, to the inclusion of uh, of some new services in the open air portfolio uh, of services and the inclusion of the open air uh, services in the osc uh, so this is a, a, a um a project focused on the development in the of our services and the integration of our services within the osc uh, feel free to join. So, uh, Andre and my colleague Andre, we also share the link here for the for the for this uh, for this page where we have the program, etc., the registrations. Uh, uh, but it's in the home page of openair.eu portal. Um, and uh, and stay tuned, stay connected with us. Uh, we will have we will keep our provide community calls every month every first wednesday of the month so all links are here until until the summer and then we will put uh, the other links after after september and uh, and uh, subscribe the newsletter or or disseminate the newsletter in your countries or in your institutions institutions if there is someone that should be aware of our of our we we try to send every every month two or three news news items so thank you very much for your presence especially to to andrea bolini and to jordan i always have problems saying your surname sorry jordan <laughs> you need i need to learn it <laughs> properly <laughs> don't worry um I am the test. So I have problems, and also the the open air APIs and the discovery services also have problems with your surname, as you mentioned. <laughs> so many thanks for your support uh, and and uh, in running this presentation. Uh, I think it will be useful. We know that lots of people then check the recordings and the presentations after. So thank you for joining. Uh, and uh, we can promise that we will do another call about this uh, later this year. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for your presence Thank today. You all.